In this lesson, I want to look at exponential functions and logarithmic functions as inverses of each other. So we talked about how if we have some base raised to some exponent, b to the x is equal to y, we could also write this as log base b of y is equal to x. And if we provide an example, we could say that 2 to the third power is equal to 8. And if we put this as a logarithm, log base 2 of 8 is equal to 3. Notice that our x's and our y's have essentially switched. b to the x equals y, log base b of y is equal to x. And that may seem familiar because when do we see x and y switch? When do we do that? Well, we do that when we are finding inverse functions. So if I want to find an inverse function of an exponential function, let's say I have f of x is equal to 2 to the power of x. Well, first I'm going to replace f of x with y. y equals 2 to the power of x. And when we solve inverse functions, first we switch x and y. And then second, we solve for y. So let's do that. I'm going to switch x and y. So my x is here, my y is here. I'm going to switch them. We're going to say x is equal to 2 to the power of y. And now we have to think of, well, how do we solve for a power? How do we solve for this y if it's in the exponent? And our answer is logarithm. So we are able to solve for an exponent by using logarithms. So we can take log base 2 of x is equal to y. We convert this to logarithmic form because it says that 2 to the power of y is x, therefore 2 raised to the y must be x. Log base 2 of x must be y. And now we've solved for y. We're good. Typically for inverse functions now, we're going to take our y and replace it back with f inverse x is equal to log base 2 of x. And there we go. If f of x was 2 to the x, f inverse x is log base 2 of x. And so as inverses, they share the properties that um, any inverse function does. So let me write f of x equals 2 to the x. f inverse x is the logarithmic function log base 2 of x. Exponentials and logarithms are inverses. Well, this means, for one, that any xy coordinate on f of x maps to a y comma x coordinate on f inverse x. And we're going to look at that in a table of values in a minute. We can also think about how does this affect our domain and our range of each function. So recall that the domain of our exponential function is all real numbers. We can input anything to our exponential function, but our range is simply y is greater than zero. We have a horizontal asymptote. Comparatively, our logarithmic function, we can get a range, an output of all real numbers, and our domain is going to be x has to be greater than zero. So with any inverse functions, the domain and range are swapped. Okay, And it is worth noting that our inverse function, the logarithmic function, has a vertical asymptote. So let's take a look at this on a graph. If I'm going to create a basic graph here with my x and y axis, and first I will plot f of x equals 2 to the power of x. So that function is going to look something like this. It's going to follow our exponential curve. One key point that we have is the point 0, 1, because 2 to the 0 power equals 1. Now, we know that inverse functions represent a reflection over this line y equals x. 
And we also said earlier that every xy coordinate is now a y comma x. So this 0, 1 corresponds to the point 1 comma 0 on our logarithmic function. Okay, well does that make sense? Log base 2, if we put our input of 1, does that equal 0? 2 to what power equals 1? 2 to the 0 equals 1. So it makes sense then that we have this corresponding point 1 comma 0. And our logarithmic function is going to look something like this, a reflection over the line y equals x. Okay, and let's look at a couple more points and compare a table of values for each function. So over here, if I have x and f of x, such that f of x is equal to 2 to the x, well, I can plug in some values. So x of 0, 1, 2, and 3. f of 0, we already looked at, is 2 to the 0, is 1 f of 1 is 2 to the first power is 2. So there's some point 1 comma 2. That doesn't come out so good. Here we go. 1 comma 2. f of 2, if we input 2, 2 squared is 4. We get an output of 4. So there's some point 2 comma 4. f of 3, 2 to the third power is 8. And we said our domain is all real numbers. We can put anything in for x that we want. It doesn't have to be these perfect integers, but it's just easier to do the math with. Then we can also look at x compared to f inverse x. And we're considering f inverse x to be log base 2 of x. And if we want to think about what inputs should we use, well, we probably want to use the outputs of our original function. So if we input 1, 2, 4, and 8, we should get out some nice answers. So let's see, f inverse of 1 equals log base 2 of 1. 2 to what power equals 1? Well, 2 to the 0 is 1. So our output, when we input 1 into our inverse function, is 0 which we see in the point we have already plotted. What about when we input 2? f inverse of 2 equals log base 2 of 2. 2 to what power is equal to 2? Well, 2 to the first. So we get an output of 1. So we have this point 2 comma 1. And notice that that is that x comma y mapping to a y comma x. 1 comma 2 is our point here, and our corresponding point is 2 comma 1. Okay, f inverse of 4, well that's log base 2 of 4, or 2 to what power is equal to 4? 2 to the second is equal to 4. So our input of 4 gives us an output of 2. And so if you look, that corresponds to the point 2 comma 4. And one more, if we do f inverse of 8, this is equal to log base 2 of 8. Or 2 to what power is equal to 8? 2 to the third. So our output is 3. And we can see that every pair of inputs and outputs in our function f of x, in our inverse function f inverse x, corresponds. It is just a mapping of inputs to outputs, remap to output to input. Okay, so logarithmic and exponential functions are inverse functions of each other, which should make some sense considering how they are defined. We are saying 2 to some power equals y. Well, if we want to solve for x, then log base b of y is equal to x. And even though I only use integers here, just know I could put anything in here, right? I could say f of 4.5 equals 2 to the power of 4.5. I can plug that into a calculator because that's pretty difficult to do otherwise. And we get about 22.63-ish. 
And so if I put 22.63 into my logarithmic function, f inverse of 22.63 equals log base 2 of 22.63. Oops. And I have no idea, right? This is saying 2 to what power equals 22.63. Well, normally I wouldn't know, other than the fact that I just did the math over here, so I know it's going to be 4.5. Um, so that is going to be our output. But otherwise, we would have to rely on a calculator to be able to tell us that this is 4.5. So the idea that I'm trying to put to you there is that this is continuous. We can put anything we want into this. We can put any sort of value, and these functions are continuous, and they work out really nice.